brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. When we go to preach, we go with a lot of patience. We go with the fruit of the spirit. We go with a lot of persuasion. We go with prayer because it's warfare. It's warfare. They are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The word pulling down is the word overthrow. Overthrow. You will see that in 2 Corinthians 3, 8 and 2 Corinthians 13, 10. Stronghold is a word used for fortress. Fortress. Ochoroma in the Greek. O-C-H-U-R-O-M-A. Ochoroma. Something people have held for long. Stronghold. A, a, a belief system that people have held for long. A mindset. It can be religious Christianity. It can be atheism. It can be morality. It can even be Christian science or Islam. A mindset. So now when we go to preach, we pull down this fortress with words. Words during evangelism. So spiritual warfare is the preaching of the gospel. Spiritual warfare is ministry. It's not a prayer. It's not a prayer thing that I just pray. No, it's engaging mindset. Engaging philosophies. Engaging opposing motions. Engaging confused minds. Engaging unbelieving minds. Engaging them with the power of God's word. Casting down imaginations. It's not pulling, it's not cobwebs. Casting down imagination is not cobwebs. You come across people say, I just entered a cobweb. Every time I enter a cobweb, 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 cobweb. It's not cobweb. It's not cobweb. Imagination is not cobwebs. Imagination is ideologies that contradict what Christ has done. He uses the word reasoning. It's a Greek word logismos. Reasoning. A thinking. A knowledge. Our warfare is not fighting demons. Is staying true to the message. Is staying true to the method. Is staying true to the facts of the gospel. As it overthrows opinions. Staying true to the facts of the gospel. As it overthrows opinions. Views. Views about God. Views about eternity. Views about salvation. Views about Christ. It's a warfare. People are going to argue, so we refute argument. People are going to argue, so we refute argument. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. First, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing everything into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. I like the word captivity. Is the word aikalitozo. It's spelled A-I-C-H-M-A-L-O-T-I-Z-O. It's a military term of bringing someone under your control. It is used by Paul. That word, captivity. 2 Timothy 3, 6. Luke 21, 24. Romans 7, 22. You engage somebody who says, but Jesus is a prophet. You tell him, no, sir. He's not a prophet. He's the savior. You tell him, but Jesus is Isa. You tell him, no. He's not Isa. He is the savior of the world. You engage minds. You bring thoughts. To obey what Christ has done. Teaching good. 
you preach that message. The focus is on Christ crucified. Christ crucified. Refuting every argument. That's spiritual warfare. In warfare, you stay there till you win. Or you stay there till the battle is over. You go today, they say no, you come tomorrow. They say no, you keep going till you win. You don't give up. Eh, so I have preached Christ to you. You refuse to accept. You refuse to accept. Okay. <laughs> Are you understanding? So I'm preaching Christ to you like this. You are rejecting. Okay, no worries. My dust will speak against you. <laughs> no. You keep going. You yourself, is it the first day you had you believed? Some of you argued, argued. There are some of you in this church, you used to be my enemy. Some of you here, you didn't like me. Every time I come on, you were off TV. Yes, sir. Or you were off the radio. Stupid man. Stupid man. But I didn't stop. I continued. Boom. Boom. After one year. Say, let me even hear what the man is saying, self. Then you listen the one. You listen the three. It's like the thing has sense. So you listen the three, the four, the five. Some more time, it becomes your best broadcast. Sometimes I say, let me go and see the church where the man is. <laughs> now you are sitting down here as a righteous man. And you are smiling as if you have always been a believer. True or false? We keep preaching it. We don't stop. Knowing the terror of God, we persuade men. So the first day you go and they abuse you, thank them, go back. Pray, pray, pray. Come back again. The man tell you, idiot, I will pour you hot water. Tell him, I'm sorry, sir. I just want to share something with you. He refuses. You go and pray again. After a while, you come back again. You stay on it. It's warfare. You stay on it. Don't give up on your father. Don't give up on your sister. Don't give up on your children. Keep preaching it. Keep preaching it. Pray, preach, pray, preach, pray, preach. Show them love. Pray, preach. One of these days, as you're preaching it, the Holy Ghost will breathe on it. Their heart will open. And the most toughest man, suddenly you see him melt. Like spaghetti in hot water. He melts and he says, what must I do to be saved? We persuade. We keep preaching. We keep preaching. We keep persuading men. We keep bringing the gospel. It's a warfare. Don't change the message. Don't change the method. Ah, God and Moses preached for 40 years. Only two people believed. You didn't hear me. God and Moses together preached for 40 years. Only Joshua and Caleb believed. Over 2 million people. 40 years of preaching. They only succeeded in getting two. You are not hearing me. How many of them? Who and who? No, no. Who and who preach? God and Moses. God and Moses. After 40 years of preaching, they succeeded to get two. Noah! 120 years. Only eight. Eh? His family. We are not saying you will preach for 10 years and have one. <laughs> now Jesus has died. And you have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody shout, I hear you. Are you getting blessed today? So, the gospel is warfare. We don't change the message. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's not Christian obedience. Uh -uh. This obedience of Christ means it means obedience to the faith. is a Greek word. Hypakou. H-Y-P-A-K-O-E. H-Y-P-A-K-O-E. It means to respond positively and totally. To respond to the obedience of Christ. It means that by warfare, you will get people to respond positively and totally. That word is used in Romans 1.5. 
obedience of the faith, Romans 5.19, obedience of Jesus, Romans 6.16, Romans 15.18, Romans 16.19, Romans 16.26, 2 Corinthians 7.15, Philippians 1.21, is for our obedience or response to the gospel and others. So the obedience of Christ is, I will war till the guy accepts the message. That's the obedience of Christ. I will stay on it. I will keep preaching till he accepts it. I will keep preaching till he accepts it. On our platform, kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also, like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.